everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Timothy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Timmy V, the T-Man, the V-Man, Virgulish, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I was actually, I was trying to remember this the other day. What, what, what was it you used to call your, uh, your Halloween parties? Uh, There's something with your last name. You, you did like a Virgilish pun. Um, uh, well, I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> for for Halloween, I, I, I don't know if uh, if that's something I did. I haven't done it in a while. Maybe, but I, maybe it wasn't Halloween, but you definitely did some sort of horror well, theme thing. The well, uh, during the summer, I always do a uh, Jaws giving. Yes, yes. Which is. That's a holiday uh, I made up where we celebrate Jaws and we watch the Jaws movies and other shark-related movies. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I might have done something for Halloween, but uh, I don't remember. It's probably been a while now. You, did. you, you totally did a few years ago, and I kind of it was bugging me. Oh well, it doesn't matter. So even you don't even know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we are a horror movie podcast, uh, and we talk <clears> about <throat> horror movies every week. Uh, coming up on this week's show. Uh, we've got The Intruder, which is an all-2019 release, which we missed in theatres. Mm-hmm. And we're going back to now, and we're going to going to talk about that. We'll start spoiler-free, we'll give you a warning in the middle before we go into spoilers. Uh, the Intruder is a film where a young couple... Um, who, Scott. Scott? Yeah, so... Oh, you're right, the... yeah. Scott, yeah. Um... <laughs> Yes, uh, Annie and Scott. Yes, uh, Megan Good being being Annie, um, who I've I have known her. I mean, Dennis Quaid, who's like the, the villain character. Like I've known him and a few things. Megan Good, I I I remember from like my childhood because she was in my cousin Skeeter, which I caught occasionally. Hell, <laughs> That's all right. I think that was a Nickelodeon show. I say Skeeter was a character on Doug. But no, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same character. It was, right. it, it was. It was one of those shows where one character just happened to be a puppet. Uh, the, the titular my cousin Skeeter. The hell? <laughs> this okay. was a thing. This was a sure. thing. All right, fine. <laughs> Megan Good, the star of Saw Five. This was like uh, what this show would have been like. 68 69 <laughs> <laughs> no it was a contemporary kid <laughs> it was a contemporary show when i was like 8 through 12 or something like that it was something in that range oh it's in the 70s <laughs> <laughs> i'm younger than you you s- <laughs> smelly face <laughs> dare you dare you you're the old man here not me <laughs> all right well we'll let our uh, patrons decide that <laughs> What? What? what, what they, don't get, they, they don't purchase the right to dictate my age. <laughs> there you. Um, that said, if, it's, if that's appealing to any of you, I'll, I'll put on your high tier. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you. Uh, th- I, you know, I learned this week that there was a guy who sold off his life for, for like shares, like to shareholders. Really? Yeah, he, he okay. sold out. He sold uh, two two hundred thousand shares of his body for one dollar a piece. And I'm not sure how it worked after that. Like, if they, if they had to like get together and decide like what he would do with his life, or vote on what he was doing, but it was so just a thing. They're making okay. a, they're making a TV show about it, which is why I heard about it. But <laughs> it, was, it was amusing to me. All right. <laughs> um, I'm not quite ready to do that, but um, I'll 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 I'll, seen, I'll I'll do embarrassing shit for money. Sure, why not? I've seen people that um, I forget the exact uh, website, but th- there was a, a website where uh, people can go to buy and sell souls. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh and it, dear! And it was like funny because like you know some are just very like you know people be like, all right, you want my soul? I'll give you like twenty bucks. But then like some people are like. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, a clean spirit. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I've, you know, lived like a good, faithful life or whatever. So uh, I think I have a very good soul. So I'm looking for five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like, it's like, all right. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to where to go with that. Um, you've, you've, you've dumbfounded me, Tim. Um, as I said, although in my head I want to do a, a thing there where I'm like. Uh, we will tear your soul apart, right? <laughs> but then in comes yeah. the second character. Goes, wait just a minute, stranger. I'll buy it at a high price. You know. 
That was hard to do because that wasn't one of his. Like, I feel yeah. like I, I can do a decent impression of the merchant from Resident Evil Four, but try to do a new sentence mm-hmm. that I've never heard him say. Yeah. That came out sounding a little, <laughs> little bit weird. Um, <laughs> what are you buying, stranger? Ha ha ha! Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, the truth are so this young couple, Megan Good and Michael Ely, play these two characters, Annie and Scott, who go you know they're in the city but they want to he's just got a promotion or whatever they're celebrating and they want to move out to a big house so they can raise a family and they they go out and dennis quaid his character uh, charlie peck uh, he owns this house and it's you know it's out in the out in the country you know a lot, a lot of forest behind the house and uh he's kind of a weird though he's out hunting deer right after they're admiring the deer uh bambi's mom gets it in the head uh but she probably had it coming so i mean it's fine um with the uh yeah that introduction scene to dennis quaid's character was uh hysterical i thought it's pretty funny there was a weird edit in the scene i thought as well where yeah. um when you hear the gunshot it cuts to their reaction but it kind of misses the start of the reaction so it feels really awkward mm-hmm. it feels like we jump in like when they're already like mid reaction and yeah, if, if, it, the timing feels off it's weird it's very very strange and he comes and is like whoa, whoa whoa i mean you no harm i mean you no harm um yeah i'm just hunting deer i'm just hunting deer the, the, you know there's a, there's a bounty on the deer because they keep they keep ruining uh, lawns and stuff um <laughs> how about i show you the house uh, so he shows them around the house they, they, they buy the house um because megan good really wants it and they're like okay great we've got this house now but the premise of the film is that this uh, Charlie Peck keeps showing up at the house, even though he doesn't live there anymore. He you know, shows up to, to mow the lawn. He shows up there to show them where the Christmas decorations are. He shows up and just offers help constantly, even though he says he was moving to Florida. So mm-hmm. this is just kind of you know, the movie. Um, and of course, he keeps turning up. It gets a bit more tense. And like, as, what is, what's his intentions? The husband's a bit more creeped out by him. Um, and from there it goes, and uh, I'll, I'll leave it there, and we'll get into the rest uh, plot-wise and spoilers. Um, what I will say is that I wanted to joke about this being kind of a remake of another movie. Um, I can't know until spoilers, not because it spoils uh, the movie that I want to reference, but because it spoils this movie. Because the other movie that I want to reference, it's not a spoiler because it's like in the title and it's like the, just the premise of the movie. In this movie, it's a twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to keep it to myself until spoilers. But I just want to I just want to make make it very clear that this movie is kind of a remake. Uh, not really. It's, it's it's one of those things where the premise is just so similar that whatever you know. Yeah. I, I don't believe they were knocking off this Gary Busey classic when. <laughs> <laughs> when they were making this yeah. <laughs> uh, but the parallels are there that's all I'm saying um, so yeah we, we have um, we have this set up um, and I guess you know, I'll just ask the question so I've, 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 given the, I've laid down the premise I've laid it down like well laid pipe right <laughs> right well laid pipe it's been laid mm. Tim yeah how do you feel about <laughs> not 1989's Intruder starring uh, uh, the the Raimis and the, the Bruce Ramy Campbell because we like that movie a lot I, I enjoy Intruder quite a bit that was a good slasher oh, movie yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, how do you feel about 2019's <clears throat> The Intruder um, so it, you know, it's definitely not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination I think and, we, and we've seen you stretch that imagination in the past. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, what's going to uh, really make or break the movie is just how crazy Dennis Quaid <laughs> can get in it. Uh, and he does get pretty crazy. Um, the I still felt like, though, it was a little boring. Like, um, there's definitely some... You know, out there, Dennis Quaid scenes that are, you know, that made me laugh, that I enjoyed. But then there's a lot of stuff kind of in between that, you know, it's just boring and stupid, like, you know, couple <clears throat> drama and like uh, uh, unnecessary sex scenes and stuff that I didn't like. And then uh, <clears throat> I... There was a... Uh, there was a pretty simple premise early on that I thought was Dennis Quaid's like motivation and then it kind of changes maybe like two thirds of the way through and I really don't like the the kind of change they have in his character 
Um, See, uh, the weird thing is, is I don't even know if it's the same thing I'm thinking of because for me there was like a motivation they, they bring in pretty late that made me yeah. laugh because it was actually far more simple and weird than anything else that was supposed to be a motivation beforehand. But, yeah. And- yeah. We'll get to it in spoilers, we'll it. but uh yeah, like there is there was definitely kind of like a a change in what I thought was going on that I was like, oh, I don't like that, but it's um I don't know, there, there's like an, enough craziness in there where there was some like mild entertainment, but um it, it wasn't as through, like throughout the whole movie as I'd hoped. So uh, I, I wouldn't really say uh, I definitely didn't like it, but there were like a few funny moments uh, here and there that at least made it you know, uh-huh. not like totally you know agonizing to watch yeah i i think for me like because we're recording this on the same day we did curse of la llorona um and i know that went up last week when this goes up so i can i can i can reference that um <laughs> i like this more than that yeah i'll, I'll say that much sure. um sure but yeah. i i tend to concur with some thoughts is that dennis quaid doesn't get crazy often enough for it to be funny um yeah. often enough but um there's a couple of there's one or two scenes where he gets delightfully crazy and it's kind of like okay he's yeah. overacting and it's kind of funny um mm. the movie's too long it's 100 minutes or 40 so it's at least 10 minutes too long arguably 20 definitely um definitely. <laughs> and so much of it is the character drama of of this married couple and there's actually there's a weird the extra thing they add in like just over halfway maybe it may even be two thirds through they add this mm. extra th- like marital problem that they've apparently had that was never brought up or <laughs> implied before that moment mm. and i thought that was kind of weird uh and tacked yeah. on it was it was almost like they wanted to like give the idea that maybe annie may actually be interested in this older dude who is, yeah. is hanging around because because a lot of the movies the husband feeling threatened because he keeps being there and he clearly wants his wife uh for in his yeah. eyes um not that he's wrong because i mean we've seen the whole movie but <laughs> um, <laughs> you know just just really just really Mm, yeah a lot, 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 lot of character drama which you know and I said this in the Lion Runner review actually if the character drama is good and it makes us care about the characters then great um, but in this case it isn't it's very kind of you know by the numbers well, yeah. you know I mean every character is so boring like the the only two people that really stand out are uh, you know uh, Dennis Quaid and um, you know uh, Scott's like best friend character because he's like such like a, an annoying over the top jerk <laughs> like sure you know yeah uh, he stands out a little bit but he's not even in the movie that much but I, jo- like ev- everyone else though is just kind of like you know very boring like you know i'm a i guess just kind of a person in this movie <laughs> I, I was actually surprised they eventually actually said outright what what scott's job was because early on when he gets a promotion no one actually mentions what he works for where you know what he does for a living and like, oh you got the big account and they're all <laughs> cheering and he's like oh you can buy a new house now and I thought it was going to do that bad movie thing where we never really understand what he does for a living. It's just a generic, no, he's successful in some sort of business. We don't know what the business yeah. is. Now, we do actually <laughs> find out, uh, you know, that he's in advertising at some point and we get a bit more scope for it, which, fine. It was just, the way they avoided telling us in the opening scene when they were all celebrating made me think, oh, we're doing that thing. We're, we're doing the... Uh, the, the room thing where Tommy Wise always I, got, got a promotion and we don't know what he does but I landed the big account like the big account yeah that's right I landed it I good job that sounds to, like you'll get a promotion to reference uh, Birdemic here yeah. uh, hangs up phone yes yeah. what what is it I caught the big fish the big fish yes <laughs> one million dollars one million dollars congratulations <laughs> Uh, I love it. So good. <laughs> um, <laughs> what we're saying is, is this movie need to be more like Birdemic to really, to yeah, really, to really hit it off. That's what we're saying. Yeah, I, it kind of feels like that's what they were banking on because I did see like a lot of articles and stuff like popping up, uh, like when the trailer came out with people saying like, "Oh my God, look at this crazy Dennis Quaid movie! Look how like over the top he's do- he's going!" Like blah blah blah. And uh, so I, I feel like maybe that's what they were kind of. Yeah, once they realize we don't really have that good of a movie, like, but maybe we can sell it as, <clears throat> oh, this like crazy over the top bad movie, but it it doesn't get, you know, to that point enough. Like, uh, yeah. it, it, there's definitely like moments here and there where you see how it could be a fun bad movie, and you know, most of it is hinging on Dennis Quaid's performance. He does these like really good like. Sm- 
smiles and like kind of like head tilts uh, which are funny but it's not unfortunately it's not enough to kind of sustain the movie yeah now the little glimmers of hope it's not an offensively bad movie it's just like kind of sure. you know like, I, it feels I think... like a lifetime movie or something <laughs> <laughs> a little bit a little bit um you know there's no surprises really everything you think is yeah. going to happen probably happens and, and and so on um and you know the actors are, are fine you know like you know it's yeah. not it's not bad performances necessarily um yeah. you almost wish dennis quaid just went crazy yeah i mean not even just that he went crazy. i think his performance is, is definitely uh you know, a bit over the top in places. They're definitely going for him being kind of a psycho. But I, at yeah. the same time, like, I really wish it was written to make, really take more use of that. Like, uh, like you said, they, they probably just realized they could try and sell it as that after the fact, where I wish they went, no, this is the movie we're making. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to do yeah. De- Crazy Dennis Quaid. He's going to say and do things that are, like, really uncomfortable and bizarre and weird and, uh, you know, bursts of violence. In fact, one of the very few bursts of violence in the movie that you see from actually isn't real. It's just him imagining that he's doing it. Um, and it's it's a good moment when you think it's happening for a second Um, but of course it's it's too early in the film to actually to go through with it because we have to keep the pretense that he's a nice you know neighborly man up until a point and uh, it's also like uh, I don't know I feel like there's kind of like weird plot holes like when you find out like some information towards the end I'm like but wait a minute how does like this person know this and um I don't know, this is some really weird stuff going on that just doesn't play out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, as vague as possible. Um, but no, it's, um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's uh, it was as fun as uh, it could have been. Like, are we going to get any horror movies this year? Other than Midsummer, obviously, which we, we praised quite heavily, uh, where we don't sit here and go, "Oh, it's kind of meddling. <laughs> it wasn't a game. Wish we had better uh, movies." <laughs> well, I, I do think um, there there has been some highlights this year. Like obviously Midsummer. Uh, I think you know um, we disagreed like a little bit, but I I really do like Us. I I think Us was really really oh, no, good. I mean. Uh, us is a pretty good movie like I, like my, my mild <laughs> reservations about a couple of plot details are, are, are it's, it's head and shoulders above most of the things we've watched this year um yeah. and i actually quite like happy death day too but obviously <laughs> tim wasn't yeah. as into that and arguably not really that much of a horror movie but still um sure. is what it is um I, I think there is a few that uh we haven't covered yet that could be possible bright spots but um yeah, I mean, overall, it definitely doesn't seem like a yeah. um, which, by, overly packed year. Which, by the way, there's a couple of movies coming up in the next few months where, once again, we are getting movies at different release dates and like a month apart, um, which unfortunately means that almost every big movie this year, with the exception of like, I mean, I think it we get at the same time at Chapter 2. Okay. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah, yeah. But ready or not, we're not getting at the same time. We're going to have to wait until home <laughs> video. Um, that looks really good. It does look fun. Uh, <laughs> and then the other one's uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. We've got like two or three weeks between those. Um, oh, so, yeah, again, the whole video. So hopefully we can get to them by the end of the and, year so we can... Yeah. It, and the thing that sucks is like, I don't know, I feel like everything leaves the theater so quickly, especially like when you have, like, um, you know, I really, really wanted to go see uh, Crawl. Uh, but mm. it's just you know one of those situations where like you know, oh I miss it the first week but I'll try to catch it the next weekend, and it was like you know I, I miss it the second weekend but then after that it was just like not even playing anymore <laughs> like yeah I I find it with horror so movies annoying. just horror movies especially I find you get one week of decent showings and then you'll get one week after that where that where it'll have like one late nighttime show in a day and then that'll be it it'll yeah. be gone after two weeks that that's yeah. With the exception of the biggest, like, it Chapter 2 might last around a bit longer because it made such, you know, the yeah. first one made so much money, but most horror movies tend to go very quickly, unfortunately. Yeah. <sighs> it sucks, it sucks. Luckily, the, the, the VOD window is getting smaller and smaller as time goes on, yeah. so <laughs> uh, it doesn't take too long. Hopefully, hopefully nothing comes out after, like, October that we want to get in by the end of the year because it'll be yeah. pushed to January. Um... But yeah, um, so I guess we'll get a spoiler warning. Let's talk about the intruder, uh, yeah. you know, full spoilers. Um, 
like, I guess we talk about some highlights. We talk about Dennis Quaid's character more than anything because he's the most interesting part of the movie. Um, I, I thought it was weird how, like, so early on he keeps showing up and it's like he's he's not willing to leave the house. He still has ownership of it or whatever. He still feels like it's his. Mm. But obviously it very quickly becomes, no, he's he's got feelings. He's, 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 he's got an obsession over Annie, over Megan Good's character. <clears throat> and yep. it's going down that path. And I'm like, you know, whatever, fine. Um... And there's, there's hints later on that maybe his wife didn't die of natural causes, maybe he killed her, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Uh, the the thing about the movie, though, that really weirded me out, or not weirded me out, but, like, struck me as very odd, is at the end of the film when he's went full-on, like, attack her, and he's, like, grabbing her and pinning her down mm. and, and whatever, he does yeah. say, he, he, he actually says things... Uh, where he's where it becomes clear that, that, it, that it is the house. Like he he starts talking about how, no, like this is my house. I I can't let anyone ruin it. I will make sure because yeah. in fact the scene that really told this to me is is when um uh, what's his face Scott uh, he, he finds out who his daughter is and where his daughter is and he phones the mm-hmm. daughter and the daughter says and I was expecting the daughter to say no he's crazy he gets obsessive about women or whatever no she says. No, he loves that house, and anything that comes in between him and that house is in danger. And I'm like, wait, so it's literally the house is the motivation for everything he's doing. Like, and even even the way he was with his wife, that his wife get in the way, so she, so he shot her in the mouth with a shotgun. So yeah, I mean, this is what was kind of driving me crazy because I do like the idea of him being obsessed with the house, and like, I think they should have. <clears throat> like showcase it more like the first scene where they have him just mowing the lawn like you know that's kind of weird but you know I, I think you know you can still kind of see it like okay fine whatever but then like I feel like they kind of should have escalated it from there like then maybe show him actually inside the house maybe doing some type of cleaning or you know um, like replacing maybe like a, a painting they put up or something with something else like I mean uh, we, we know he sneaks in at one point and turns the TV off like yeah. that, that's one thing it is. actually at one point uh, once the husband is starting to feel like he's hanging around too much he puts in a security yeah. system he gets, he gets a security company to come out and put in security cameras which by the way mm. never is brought up again or is relevant oh, yeah, to anything else in the film doesn't ever matter. Like, <laughs> there's, ne- there's never a single shot of like footage from a security camera or them being aware of someone or something happening outside because <laughs> of a security camera uh, it's never a factor yeah. So, like, like, at first, you're thinking that, uh, yeah, it, it's so strange, because I, I do like that idea of him more just being, wanting to help around the house and, like, you know, stop anyone from, you know, uh, making changes to it. But then, like you said, uh, at one point, it kind of flips, and it seems like all he really cares about is Andy. And that's when I, like, really, like, lost interest. I was like, ah, I don't want him to be, like, creepy, trying to you know get this girl and uh as they actually do like some really like gross like shots where it's just like him and he just hears like breathing and he's like staring and then yeah Yeah. you know towards the end you know he starts to get like a little rapey and stuff like that stuff i really didn't like i wish it would have been just like strictly the house yeah it kind of flips back to the house i I will say though that this they they go full crazy rapist though when he starts just licking her um like he's he's licking her like (sighs) chest and her, her chin uh, when she's yeah. passed out, um, that, that was like that scene because it was the it was, that was probably the craziest he got. The look in his face as he was licking her uh, yeah. was, was proper <laughs> crazy Dennis Quaid. Um, yeah. So yeah, so the big twist is though is that there's like a linen closet in the in the mm-hmm. hall which actually has a secret door behind it which leads to a, a a basement area which he didn't know about where he's been staying. So the the twist is is that he has literally been living in the house <laughs> the entire time. Yeah. So. I was referring to earlier, of course, the Gary Busey classic, <coughs> Hider in the House, where he yeah. hides in a family's attic and pretends to be this nice neighbor who keeps coming around to help, and he has a thing for the for the wife, and he's trying to uh, woo her and steal her from her husband. That is the plot of this movie, it, it is Dennis Quaid trying to woo and steal <laughs> uh, Megan Good, and he's secretly living in the house. The only difference is, is that we don't know he's living in the house until the last act. Uh, it's a reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, which, by the way, I thought it was weird how like, she finds there, she goes down, she sees the bed, and she, she, she's sort of creeping around, and she sort of, like, realizes that it, it exits out of the like, the garden shed, and she's sort of poking her head out, and she sees Dennis Quaid, like, you know, fixing his hair in the, the car, 
I thought it was weird how he just notices her and it immediately begins a chase. I thought, why not play yeah. with this a little bit? Why not play with the idea that she knows this is here and try and have her like just convince him to leave, pretending that everything's okay, but not yeah. like this, you know? Uh, there's also a really weird reaction when he first notices her because he says like no but like i don't know they uh, it almost sounds like demonic or something the way he says it i don't know if they like did an effect on his voice or if he just like what like said it in a really weird way but like i rewound it like two or three times to <laughs> double check and i was like it's it sounds very strange when he first knows her very odd very very, very odd um yeah, so I thought that was strange. Um, like I say, the security cameras never become a factor. Like, it's weird. It feels yeah. like they're setting up a plot beat that'll be really important later on and it never comes up. Um, and yeah, he chases her and knocks her out and they have a bit of a struggle and, you know. But that, that all everything we're talking about here, all, all this stuff where he's chasing her through the secret secret rooms, uh, where he's licking her, where the, the fighting really happens, this is all in the last, like, 20 minutes. The yeah. first hour and 20 minutes, because it's an hour 40 long, um... So too long, like I said. Um, most of that is just he keeps coming over, being nice. The husband gets kind of weird and jealous about it. Uh, not that he's in the wrong, because he's like it is weird that the guy keeps coming over. But yeah. um, but we just kind of do that stuff on a loop for a while. Um, although there is one weird, like I say, sort of tangent at one point where um, the husband's at work and the client for this like advertising account uh, kind of invites him to a bar she's clearly attracted to him and he goes to the bar and he sends her a text saying I'm working late I'll you know I'll be back later uh, I'll, I'll be back later don't you know wait up and okay we, we know what he's doing we know that he's, he's potentially being really scummy here um, but she reacts to this really badly and I thought is she overreacting here but then she makes it clear that no the one time that he's texted her saying that he's going to be late is a time that he did cheat on her uh, before they got married and this is never referenced or mentioned or I don't even think I don't think it was implied at any point before this in the movie I mean, the, the only other thing is that they had that scene at the ice cream shop where she got mad because, you know, she thought he was flirting with the girl, which I guess maybe he was, but, like... Yeah, you're right. Now, I, I'll be honest, I completely forgot about that scene. You're right, so... It, it is such, like, a weird, like, out-of-nowhere scene. And, like you said, uh, everything before this, like, you are led to believe that this is, like, the perfect couple. Yeah, like, the you know, happiest, the, yeah. Yeah, so, um, like, it, there's no seed, so when it just comes up, it's just kind of, like... Oh, I guess this is an issue. Okay, so my complaint then isn't about this point in the movie, it's about the ice cream scene, because it's the same yeah. complaint, is that before that, there's no hint yeah. that there's anything going on, or that they've got a problem. Um, yeah. it just, it, and it's, like, super weird, like, the way it's kind of, I don't know, like, filled and stuff, like, it just yeah. is so strange. And <laughs> the, the only thing I can think of is that they wanted to, like, tease to the audience that maybe if Dennis Quaid isn't a crazy man, maybe she actually will be it. Because they have a scene where she's talking to her friend and they talk about how he's attractive for an older man and how he's got that kind of, like, man's manliness of, like, what the grandfather's yeah. like. <laughs> well, that's a weird way to put it. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> I mean, weird That's exactly it. how the characters describe it, but it's like, okay. And, uh, and I do think it is, like... Um, like Dennis Quaid, obviously, he's like you know, in good shape for his age, and I think from a distance, you know, he can he does still look handsome. But when you do get up really close, like you can really see his age. So I think it it, it is strange, uh, I don't know, for these characters to be like, you know, like I don't know, I think he's kind of hot. It's like really, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, to, to be fair, in the context of the conversation, they're just they're just talking about you know nothing that's yeah. going to happen. They're, they're just sort of you know, it's, it's an instant conversation about. Yeah. a person right um and i'm just checking i'm curious Dennis quaid was born in 54 so he uh would be 65 five yeah 65 um yeah. he's an older dude now yeah so I, I guess not too bad i just i don't know like when they would do like close-ups and stuff and i just felt like it really was like oh yeah he's <laughs> he's old for sure sorry Dennis. Uh, too many wrinkles for tim he's not into you yeah <laughs> yeah give me randy any day um but have you heard uh, randy randy quaid oh randy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah and then that's the other thing that was like kind of annoying in the, in the movie which uh you know, like you said I, I think it's because they're trying to set up this whole like i don't know maybe they would be better together kind of thing but like the wife is just so overly nice like 
to the point where it's just like so unrealistic like <clears throat> this guy that's kind of being creepy and won't leave and you invite him like to thanksgiving dinner like, like i i, I will a- i will buy it up until that point up until that point he's he's not being too bad and she is just trying to be yeah. nice what got me though is that by the time the husband does want to like kind of warn him and say stay away from my wife is she still sort of mouthing sorry to him and like i'm like at this point he has crossed so many lines that you should not be even thinking about his feelings at this point like yeah it's, it's done it's yeah it's just a uh, it's a little too much and it's too weird <laughs> Yeah, it feels like it's just happening so the plot can keep moving exactly the way that it wants to move, uh, not because yeah. it makes any sense. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of shots where like you know, they'll be walking about in the house in the dark, and then there'll be like a, a flash of light, and you'll see Dennis Quaid standing in the background. Yeah. Um, you have the best friend Mike, uh, who's basically just there to be a bit of a dick, but also so we can actually have someone be murdered because there's not many yeah. people that he can kill, so he's the only one that actually gets killed. Um, yeah. <laughs> he, he stabs him in the stomach with an axe. Um, but, uh, now. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of awkward moments where he comes out of the house after they've moved in and he's like, oh, what happened to the tapestry that was here? Oh, uh, you know, I, like that, that really put the house together. That was, that was a really nice thing. He's like, well, it's my house now and I put up this yeah. painting. And it's, I like this painting. It's so on. And, and there's like some good, like, reaction shots to, like, uh you know dennis where yeah i I feel like you just kind of see him like with his vacant stare in his eyes just like this really like forced on smile almost seemed like joker like in some Mm. instances i mean like when mike's pissing (laughs) on the lawn yeah (laughs) (laughs) and he's like you're pissing on my lawn it it was funny like during that scene uh when yeah he like you know goes off to uh yeah, take a piss or whatever and, and, and like my reaction was like this is pretty messed up like you just buy a new house and you invite your friends over and they go uh just like go to the bathroom uh, like on the on the lawn and then it's funny as they bring it up later yeah they do pull them up for it yeah when they've been the fight there's like there's like four bathrooms in this house come on yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but um yeah i don't know i think uh yeah that's another thing with like these kind of movies is uh it, they can end up being like a little dull because yeah like you know they they don't really get a chance to do that much violence or have that much body count or anything to them i want to, um, I want to talk about a, uh, a sin i saw you tweeting that you saw a sin with pizza and i'm sure you'll tell us about it yes, uh, yes. but i've got a cardinal <laughs> sin about their tv okay so many people think it's a good idea to have your TV above your fireplace. I'm going to tell you right now, it's too high. You want your TV <laughs> eye level, right? I don't want to be craning my neck up to look at your stupid TV. It's too high. You say, oh, it's good because it's like neatly over the, the fireplace. No, 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 no. Lower down. It's a bad place for it. It's a poor place for it. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> That's eye fair. level, eye level, people. You want to dead ahead for my level. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a good point. Uh, if you want to talk about the the pizza scene, this uh, is similar to your TV. This drove me crazy. Um, uh, so as. I was actually looking for this because I saw your tweet before I watched that and I was like, oh, I'm going to look for this pizza sin. Like, what was it? Are they going to eat pizza with a cutlery? Are they going to eat pizza, uh, you know, crust first? Like, what are they going to do? What's going to happen? So, uh, he, you know, uh, so uh, Scott's in the hospital, so, you know, Dennis Quaid com- comes because, over. Oh, just, oh. just for the record, because Dennis Quaid ran him off the road when he was jogging. <laughs> in a very, very... Uh, how would you call it uh just like a undramatic scene like i I feel like we're so used to this kind of like when you see like someone run someone over in a movie it's always like a very like jarring like impactful thing this it kind of just felt like the truck just kind of nudged him and then he fell down (laughs) like like the truck wasn't really going that fast just kind of like bopped him on the side and you know obviously a huge piece of machinery is gonna you know even if it doesn't look like super impactful uh, you know it's gonna do a lot of damage but so just the way it looked it just felt like very like not that big a deal <laughs> yeah uh, let's see baby pizza what happened to pizza right. so then uh, dennis quake comes over and he's like oh i'm so sorry I-, I heard about scott uh you know i i brought a pizza over uh, i just put everything on it you can just pick off what you don't like <laughs> i was like are you freaking serious like i would have 
throw the pizza in your fa- in the person's face. Like that is the worst way to make a pizza. First of all, like everything that's just way 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 too much that's gonna weigh the pizza down um you know that's gonna be like way too messy uh and then like i I'm, like i admit like i'm kind of like a picky eater and it, you know and it is it can be annoying and stuff but like you know when you don't like like there's certain stuff that yeah you could just pick off but then there's a lot of stuff that's gonna get under the cheese uh that's gonna be you know really hard uh that's gonna have like a baked in smell like to the Uh pizza that it's even if you pick it off it's not gonna be the same it's it's just i completely agree with you tim um but uh, think about it though if you have two choices where all right i don't know what this person likes i can either go a simple route and just get a plain cheese because everyone's always fine with that or i can go the route where i get everything and then they can try to figure out <laughs> what they like like what i mean obviously he's an insane person like but <laughs> you know like why would you do that it's just so so crazy oh yeah, my god i was god. fuming <laughs> yeah, so, so you try to like pick off mushrooms on a pizza oh no that's, that's too much no, no it, it, yeah it's too it, it's gonna be like it's gonna be inside it's gonna be baked there you're yeah. gonna lose a lot of cheese because mm-hmm. you know the cheese is gonna come off with it and then you know if you if you really don't like something like there's some stuff that's fine it's like oh i don't like this just whatever like you know boom it, it's off but then yeah there is other stuff that you know it's just like the the oils and the scent just gets baked into the pizza so even if you yeah take the mushroom off you're still getting this hint of mushroom that yes is no good you're getting the essence of mushroom i don't want the essence of mushroom on my on yeah. my pizza thank you very much um so this should have been the turn in the movie like this is when a light bulb should have gone o- over her head she's like this guy's <laughs> insane i'm not safe with this man uh tim does it upset you that i've given up pizza tim is that like you'll be back <laughs> <laughs> you'll be back <laughs> I don't know, Timmy. I don't know. Uh, what do you want to live forever? Come on. <laughs> Just past fifty. But my goals are reasonable. <laughs> oh. I mean, I, I love pizza, but I mean, I don't have it as often <laughs> as I, I wish. It's you know, it's becoming less of a you know. It, you can't really do it like weekly, <laughs> you know. Like, but every now and again, it's fine. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I understand. I understand. Uh, yeah. Uh, so pizza and uh, TV of a fireplace gate uh, is, is, is come to a close. <laughs> um, so good. Good to know. Um, I. Yeah, I, and we're talking about stupid stuff like this because the movie's not that interesting to talk about. Like we, you know, they, the, that's the thing is it should be crazier. Like when you watch the trailer and you look at Dennis Quaid's performance, you think, oh, this is like a nutso movie. But the, the sad thing is, it's just. There's a lot of stuff like this that's just not, you know, fun or interesting. It's just there's a lot of boring in between, like, the few moments here and there where you're yeah. like, okay, that's kind of fun. That's funny. There's, there's so many scenes in this movie where he'll come over uh, and he'll be making small talk with, with Megan Good and it'll be going kind of okay. The husband's not around. And then she'll eventually say, oh, do you want to go over for Thanksgiving? Or later on when he's coming over and she's looking at the Christmas lights and she's putting them up uh, outside – uh, she's like, hey, do you want help? You know, she'll she'll offer him a bone. She'll throw him a bone, and yeah. he'll get involved. And they'll end up, you know, sitting having drinks together or whatever. But this happens a few times where she'll extend an olive branch, and he'll become more involved and whatever. Um, either that, or the husband's there, and he's kind of annoyed as it's happening. Uh, at least in the yeah. first half, and in the second half, he'll tell him to go away, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a whole thing as well where uh, the husband doesn't like guns, um, because his brother was oh, yeah. shot as a kid. This was like a good. Yeah, this was like another crazy thing that was just like all right so this probably would have been interesting to know like at some other point in the movie because we find that you yeah, find this out like halfway through because uh dennis quaid is walking about with a hunting rifle and he doesn't like guns um and obviously you're thinking okay so that's this, this the main couple in this film are black maybe they're, they're going to try and shoot for some themes um because dennis quaid's white maybe they're going to do something with the guns and the idea and he mentions his brother was shot in the street you know maybe he doesn't say it was by a police officer but maybe maybe you could read into that if you wanted to um I don't think the film does anything with it. Like the film, the fact that he's uh, doesn't like guns being in his house seems to be nothing more than something else that he is mad about when Dennis Quaid's around. Because it's something, it's another line that he's crossing, as opposed to it actually really having much to do with his character. Because ultimately, all it really builds up to is the final moment where, after they've tackled Dennis Quaid and they've got him kind of injured, um, 
you know, Megan Good makes the choice when she's on the phone at the police to say that my husband shot an intruder, even though he's not yeah. done it yet. Um, <laughs> and, you know, uh, Scott points the gun at him. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and then the, the movie cuts to black as the, the gunshot goes off. Um, and... I, you know, it's like I'm looking for something the movie's trying to say, like about the characters, like you know, about them, yeah. like making this choice to like take take out their vengeance or like make sure he's just gone before they, you know, <clears throat> instead of like just going going by the book. I don't think there yeah. is though. I, I think it's might just be a typical movie ending where like, oh no, hurrah! They beat the bad guy. They beat the villain. Yeah, I mean, it, it might have more relevance if he actually really cared that much about the character. But yeah, as it stands, it's just kind of like a. All right, fine. <laughs> you know, it's, who cares? <laughs> I don't think I was anything to say. Like, you know, I was searching for, I was really searching the film for me at various points, thinking that they might be trying to say something, and I don't think there ever really was. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a really shallow movie that's just based on its one premise, and the premise could be fun, um, but sure. I would argue that if you want a fun version of this movie. Go watch Hyder in the House. Go watch Gary Busey. Because as good as Dennis Quaid might be trying to be the crazy guy, he ain't ever going yeah. to top Gary Busey. No. <laughs> he ain't ever going to top him. So yeah. that would be my my recommendation. But, I mean, mm. you know, you can... <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can uh, say what you want. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add about the movie? Uh, I'm trying to think if, if there's any other points. I don't know. He, it was it was kind of weird the scene where he kills Mike uh, just because like he, you know, he notices him, uh, you know, outside, and then he chases him down, and then once he realizes like, oh my God, it's you. Uh, I, I didn't realize, and then they kind of like walk in. They're having like this long talk, and he's like, yeah, you gotta be careful. Like I could have killed you. Blah blah blah. And then. You kind of get the idea of where it's leading up to, but it feels like it just takes so long to get there. Um, yeah, I think the but, idea is that he's walking him away from the house just to make sure that no one will see it. Yeah. You know, or at least, you know, the Megan Good won't see it. Um, yeah. And then the and the scene where he calls, uh, he finally is able to, you know, call and speak with uh, his daughter. Uh, it, I thought it was weird that, you know, she's like, oh, he, he killed my mother and then, you know, made it look like a suicide, but what i was trying to figure out is like all right well how does she know that like did she specifically see that or like did she is she just assuming that because she's like yeah, oh, I I know my father is like shady yeah. so i think the idea is that she she just knows how crazy her dad is and is making the uh, the, the illogical assumption that that's yeah. what happened <clears throat> but then also i think what's kind of shitty is like she gets upset though she's like you know like now leave me alone and don't ever call me again like wouldn't you be concerned for these people like wouldn't you be like oh wait why are you calling me about my dad is something wrong is he threatening you like you need to call the police now instead she's like don't call me <laughs> like it was like kind of weird um yeah yeah i mean maybe she's been through a lot of shit she's just got no time for compassion or empathy yeah I, just, I, I guess yeah, yeah that's, that's my guess I, I didn't think about this scene too much if i'm honest <laughs> i think but oh, that's, that's fair right? but at this point i was like kind of like just glazed over just watching the movie kind of finish playing out um yeah so no yeah. i mean you know I, I, it's one of those things where like it, this could be a fun B movie if it just veered into crazy and over the top a bit more. Um, taking itself so seriously really hampers it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think the two big things is you need to, <clears throat> yeah, focus on the crazy a little bit more and shorten it up. Like if it was a, you know, 85, 90 minute movie uh, that, you know, uh, was a little faster pace and got a little crazier then yeah it would have been a total fun b movie as it is it's kind of just a you know boring mediocre movie with a few glimpses here or there of some fun but i think part of the problem as well is that like megan good and uh the husband they they can't see him being outright crazy until the movie's yeah. ready for them to know about that so yeah. we only really get to see him be full-on crazy when there's someone else around that isn't going to like you know someone separate like mike yeah. he, he's the one who gets killed before she knows what's happening with him um yeah. so because of that you have a lot of scenes where 
okay, he looks kind of crazy in the eye and he's doing these little smiles, but he can't actually act out in any way until quite far on into the movie. So it means that if the actual direction and characters aren't interested enough to hold your attention, you've got quite a long stretch of the movie before things get interesting. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. that, that, you know, and that can work if you've got the right director, you've got the right, you know, script, you know, sure. making it, you know, building it up as suspenseful. Uh, this movie is not that though. Uh, not the worst thing ever. It wasn't like painfully to watch. I mean, I'll say that. Like, I mean, yeah, especially you know, like you mentioned earlier, we kind of watched it like not. Or, I mean, at least for me, like I didn't watch it like back to back with La Llorona, but you know, <laughs> it was like pretty close. You know, within like the same kind of yeah, I, one or two day span. And, and compared to that, I definitely had more fun with that. But I, I did watch them back to back. Every week, I tell myself I'll watch one of the movies like the night before the movie on the Friday, <laughs> and every single week I end up watching them back to back on the Sunday. Yeah. Every single time, yeah. and I always hate myself for. It. I wasn't. Like, no, this is like I'm on, on, on the crunch. I'm always crunching the two movies back to back. <laughs> Shouldn't do this, David. Yeah. My uh, like my marathon, uh, you know, this weekend was uh, La Llorona, and then uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, <laughs> and then The Intruder. So oh, you're such a prick. <laughs> guess which one i enjoyed the most oh <laughs> uh, i don't get that for three weeks oh i hate you so much oh really yeah uh, you know what's funny is i i literally watched it in hollywood and uh, at one point they like cut to a shot of the theater i'm watching it in <laughs> which is kind of like surreal <laughs> uh, that's like godzilla um the original 1954 godzilla premiered in a building that in the movie you see getting destroyed by oh, really? <laughs> uh, which they actually did again in the 1998 American one because it premiered in Madison Square Garden and if you remember that movie the entire yeah. final act <laughs> took place in Madison Square Garden <clears throat> and did you see the news that they're releasing all the uh, the Shoah uh, era yeah, yeah and a uh, criterion spine um, number 1000 baby yeah kind of interested uh, I kind of like to see that because I haven't seen that many Godzilla movies but uh uh, I've, I've actually read more Godzilla comics than I've seen movies, but I, I really like the comics. I have seen all but the last two movies in that box set, so I can tell you that there is... The, the original is a classic, a masterpiece. There's like three or four really good sequels in there. There's a few middling ones that are kind of fun in places, but not that great. And then there's a few that are really bad. And then there's a, the one that's an outright clip show. You, can you imagine going to pay for a movie and there's a clip show of previous movies? <laughs> That'd be insane. Uh, yeah. But yeah, one, one of them is a clip show. So uh, technically, I, I'd call it 14 movies and uh, a ripoff. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be tempted to check it out, but uh, probably going to depend on what the price is. <laughs> well, uh, worth mentioning that in November, you get the the sale at Barnes & Noble for Criterions. If you, it's true. Yeah. So, so that's right after it comes out, because it comes out at the end of October. So okay. uh, I, I'd recommend uh, keeping an eye out for the deals Okay. in November so uh, cool. I guess with nobody intruder I guess I don't have much yeah. much else to add on the on the movie um, so of course you can let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments and like and subscribe all well, that I stuff. Get a, give it a score right it's a good point I, I the outro the, the start of the plugging and in, intruded in upon the review itself I apologize <laughs> Tim what are you giving the intruder uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5. Uh, like you said, it's not the worst thing ever, but there really isn't much to it. There's a a few, uh, like, you know, Desquade's performance is, you know, good, and there's some fun to it, and there's, like, a, a few scenes here and there where I was laughing, but unfortunately they're not kind of played up enough to, you know, bump it up to, like, oh, man, this is, like, a really bad but fun watch. Uh, so, yeah, 3.5, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with that score, actually. I think 3.5 is exactly right. Um, yeah, could I mean, maybe tempted to go to a four, but I, I just not enough. Yeah, I was thinking about that a little bit, but I think maybe if it was like a little shorter, it wasn't as boring during parts. I, I could easily see it be as a four, maybe even a four point five. But as it is, yeah. Not, not that that's swinging for the uh, the fences, but <laughs> um, so yeah, no. So uh, that is, that's a score. Uh, 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 Patreon, Patreon dot com slash TV is a big way that you can support us. Uh, obviously, you can like and subscribe, and you can do all those things, and they do help. You can rate the podcast on your Apple Podcast, whatever podcast app you use. Um, but the main way that you can support us is financially, and that's at Patreon dot com slash TV, where you can support us for as little as one dollar per month, and for that one dollar per month, uh, you get access to an exclusive episode. Uh, 
uh, every month. Um, there's five of them in the, in the bank so far that you can check out on Patreon. Uh, you get a new one every month. Uh, we have done things such as Ice Cream Man, Blood Diner, uh, The Invisible Maniac, Demon Wind. <laughs> uh, you know, bunch of bunch of yeah. sort of wacky movies that are fun to talk about. Uh, so you can do that for one dollar. Uh, there's higher tiers, of course. At the five dollar tier, you get to vote in a movie every month, and you get to uh, to put movies into the crypt. Uh, so you can so go have a look at Patreon. See if you're interested. And we are working towards a goal. If we hit 250, uh, we will start doing a monthly stream called Streams After Midnight, which will be a mixture of different things with me and Tim just kind of hanging out once a month on live streams. So uh, and if you want that, uh, go and support us on Patreon and make it make it a reality. Um, otherwise, you can actually send in questions to the show now uh, mm-hmm. via email. You can do that in mftvquestions at gmail.com. You can send us bigger questions there. You can also send us questions, of course, on the Twitter, which is at Screams Midnight. And you can follow that anyway, just for uh, random nonsense for me and Tim, um, mm-hmm. as we tend to do. Uh, do that. Uh, check out other shows we have in the network that are different from uh, Screams, such as the Sci-Fi Movie Podcast, the Atomic Cinema Experiment, which we typically refer to as the Ace. Uh, you can check out that. Uh, similar in format to this show, but uh, with me and Tara and Sci-Fi Movies. Um but of course, no Chopping Mall because Chopping Mall, as you know, is more of a horror movie. So no. that was that was on streams <laughs> after midnight. <laughs> Only because there's, there had been no Ace yet, there yet. But. That is an interesting question. If no. we if if we had if we're doing that now, and I, the, the question came up, should we do Chopping Mall? I wonder if Tim Blake, no, that is a that is an episode of the Ace. <laughs> that is not streams after midnight. I refuse. I refuse to accept that. <laughs> Honestly, it's going to come down to if I want to do the movie or not. <laughs> I'll fight for it, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I will tell you what movie you're doing, Tim, and you will like it. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, that has been... Uh, what did we do? The Intruder. <laughs> that, has been, that has been the Intruder episode of Screams After Midnight. Um, so thank you once again for watching or listening. We'll be back next time with something scary. We record these episodes in advance and in order, so I have no idea what's next. So I can't tell you and I can't tease it or or whatever. But just know that we are building up episodes to the October Thon 2019, and it'll be the biggest October Thon yet with the most episodes ever. Um, more bonus episodes for Patreon, more episodes for everyone, more episodes, more votes, more everything. October Thon's coming. It's true. <laughs> In like three months. Uh, so that is us. <laughs> Thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching the scary movies, guys. And we will see you next time. Uh...